So let's go in, put some oil on her, and pray for healing. And that's the, like, kind of the typical um, thing with the church is that we've waited to that point to be anointed or to be healed. I think that we are so emotionally damaged and spiritually damaged that we are on life support, that we are barely hanging on. And so for me, an anointing service and this type is to pray for that kind of healing. And I'm not saying that, that illnesses and all that kind of stuff are not a big deal, but what keeps us locked up is a big deal. And so the anointing service is that you are praying um, for God to help you. Uh, when you come to God and you get baptized, everybody knows that the Holy Spirit draws you to God. And literally draws you to God. Shows you the cross, shows you your need of God, all that kind of stuff. There's a point where all of a sudden you get that so strongly that I know my need. I repent of that kind of stuff. I... I so long for the blood of Christ to cover me. I can't do this on my own. Please cover all this junk in my life. Please give me the strength to do all that kind of stuff. But there's a time that God just lifts you up and you're on your own feet and you literally continue to raise up and put your arms to heaven and say, now fill me up with everything. I want it all. And anointing service is that part of it. I want it all. Amen. I don't want to walk around anymore empty. I don't want to walk around anymore in my own strength. I want to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that I love people naturally. That it is a natural outcome of who I am. So anointing is literally saying to God, is baptize me in the Holy Spirit, fill me up, and let me not walk in my own strength. Um, yes. Yeah. Say real loud. Uh, no, um, I got the amplified light on and said, it's difficult, it, it was about anointing me, anointing my head with oil. It says, it is difficult for those living in a temple climate to appreciate that it was customary in hot climates to anoint the body with oil to protect it from excessive perspiration. When mixed with perfume, the oil imparted a delightfully refreshing and invigorating sensation. Athletes anointed the bodies as a matter of course before running the race. As the body, therefore, anointed with oil was refreshed, invigorated, and fitter and better fit for action. So the Lord would anoint his sheep with the Holy Spirit, whom oil symbolizes to fit them to engage more freely in his service and run in the way he directs. And heavenly foes shall fulfill. Amen. Um, if somebody wants a copy of that, and, it, and all it is saying again is the same thing, is that God literally wants to anoint us so that we are equipped to do whatever. And sometimes we think whatever is to teach a revelation seminar. It is not. It's to love each other. Um, the number one issue in all of Christian churches, they did studies all the way, denominational lines, all the way across the board, and the number one issue is that people are alone. People's loneliness was the number one concern. And this is in a church where God says love one another. The two commandments, love God and love each other, and we are dying because we're lonely. And so it's like we, we were not doing it. And so the anointing service is for healing. It's also for equipping. It's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask, before we get into that, is anybody interested in that? Is there anybody that's going to stay in for the anointing? Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have prayer. Um, we're going to dismiss folks. Right, and and um, Brian, you can come up, or, or, or um, um, Randy, you can come up. And so we can come up, and we're going to have prayer and dismiss the people that are not interested in that. People that want the anointing to stay back. We're going to do individual anointings. Um, I want you to think of one thing that is really important. When you get anointed, um, God says, you know, that, that I can't get through your garbage sometimes. And sometimes, like, I was molested by my father. And so when I, when I came for an anointing, I literally had to say, um, let me deal with that anger and that hatred towards my father because that, that keeps God from pouring into my life. And so think about before you get anointed, is there anything that's left undone in your life? Is there anybody that you have to say, you know what, um, I forgive this person and I literally want you to say a name. You know, don't just do it, I forgive everybody in my background or whatever, I forgive this person. If the person is still alive, I want to pray, pray a special blessing for them and that God keep his hand on them. So not only do I want you to be able to forgive them, but allow me to pray blessings into their life. Because blessings mean that they get saved. Um, and that's what we're praying for. And then we'll do the anointing after that. We're going to um, have um, um, three teams for anointing. Three teams of anointing. Um, I'm going to ask you, we, we are going to anoint the people that are going to pray first, so you can kind of get a sense of what that is. Would that be helpful? And then, and then, um, um, then those folks will then come in um, to different places. You can go up to anybody, and um, and we'll start praying. Um, can you
can you kind of pray or, or and then just uh, or say anything that you want to say? Um, I want to say as we wrap up and we have prayer, um, number one, this may seem strange to you. As Adventists, we are incredibly scared of the Holy Spirit. Um, we believe in Him. He's going to come someday. Someday. Um, and, and we're really scared because it feels a little emotional. And we've been, we've been trained to not have any emotion sometimes. Um, but the power of God is manifest in our lives through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So don't let this freak you out. It's biblical. Okay. Um, and it's okay. You don't, like she said, you don't have to be dead to be an owner. Um, and so I, I urge you and I challenge you um, as one who comes from that background with, that has been trained to be scared of all emotion in the realm of spirituality. Um, secondly, for those of you who are, who are leaving, um, who are heading out, what have you. Again, my prayer, our prayer, all three of us, is that this not just be a cool weekend. And now I just love Cherie's stories. So cool that God works through her. Uh, if God can work through Cherie, God can work through you. Um, you don't have to have a scary testimony for God to do amazing things through you. We are all incredibly broken. We have all suffered the pain of being on a messed up planet. And if you don't have that story to tell, then I, I beg of you, I plead with you, um, to start that journey with God. It's not about what you can do, it's what He can do. And finally, if you are wrestling with addiction, if you are wrestling with bitterness, anger, if, if you're wrestling with there's just something missing in your life, your marriage isn't what it should be, whatever it is, find someone that you can go to who will lead you to Jesus. Uh, I believe in Christian counseling, good solid Christian counseling, recovery groups, celebrate recovery, solid Christian recovery ministries. Um, let me, a, a uh, lot of stuff. Let, let me just um, say something with that. Is, um, there's both, there's, these are two churches represented here. We've got um, Kina Church with Randy Maxwell. We've got The Experience. And this is my pastor <laughs> with um, uh, Brian Yeager. And we are starting recovery. Brian has a recovery program in his church already. Um, I'm going to jump on board with uh, some folks in your church and, and start Celebrate Recovery Program in his church. And it covers everything.